Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good way. Um, today is really uh, kind of sets the tone for our uh, next discussion. It's a beautiful day out there. And uh, yesterday uh, I spoke about gratitude. 
to be thankful for what we have and with the environment in our program. Now, I want to talk a little bit about kind of laughter. But it's not like rules to your car keys. You know, you could find them or remember where they're at and retrieve them. But losses come in many different forms. And it's something that we have as humans have developed over the time, generations. But losses are synchrony impact. And it's a, such a wide discussion. How do you, something that's gone, how, when do you know it's missing? When you don't see it? And, and that's what our environment, that's just one discussion. That's just one discussion. It's like the environment, we, we're, we're losing a little bit about that. We're losing some animal. The erosion of the environment. We're losing sometimes the trees, the rivers, and the environment will slowly dissipate. And the same as the um, our ozone and stuff like that. You don't notice it, just like your car keys, until you need your car to be go somewhere, then you can't find your key. The same principle as that, but also losses consist of personal loss. Again, there's so many subjects when you can just talk about one thing. And then one thing to cover a whole different range of how we try to survive, human mankind try to survive in the uh, in this environment. How we treat Mother Earth, how do we get face back? One of the others that I spoke to from Saskatchewan about three weeks ago because we, we communicate and he's a good friend of mine. He said, Joe. Of course I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Mother Earth is angry with us. Mother Earth is, is getting back at us. And, and I just let him talk and he said, we're having fires. Large fires. And I thought about it, and I, and I thought about what happened down in Halifax in Tantalum, how a simple spark, a simple spark, ignited the tree. And, and it burned down and it consumed uh, property and areas and homes and stuff like that. So, to me, I looked at it and, and said it was a environmental concern. You know, the environment, they left stuff there and it built up dry. So it, it's kind of ironic too because could it have been prevented? Um, what would they listen if you brought up concerns? Then the owner said, water, we're getting floods. And again, I thought about it and I said, it, well, it, to myself, I said, it's the environment. Then what happened? We get a flood here in Nova Scotia, the drain, and, and the environment couldn't handle it. The surroundings, because we lost the erosion around the tree lines and, and stuff like that, and, and it continued on flooding, which caused 
simple, simple letter that we see every day, rain or snow. And it, and it took uh, three lives. And it took um, children's lives. They were washed down the river. But the environment is harsh. The environment, it's, it makes you wonder, think about it. You know, you have fire, and you have water, blood. So, even with that roof, there was law. The opposite of gratitude. The loss of life. But also, the fire, the environment, we have loss of animals that are living the world. And we have a flood where the environment affected their living conditions. Even the um, forest that the products and stuff like there, we're getting a lot of animals. Their, their, their food sources have changed across the clear cotton and development of humans. A lot of animals now, they say, you know, we, we went after their habitat where they live. But now you see more animals. You see, I mean, these are big animals. Deer, right in the city of, uh, in cities and towns. You know. Human, they're not, they're not invading our human uh, environment. What we did as humans, we invaded their environment, particularly their forests. But eventually, because of all the chemicals, all the things that we use for natural occurrence, things that we protect are now fertilizing the animal. And the loss is very important to know. We, we, know, we have to know now. So we lose a lot of animals, species, but we will lose them. We lost them a long time ago. We lost a lot of animals. We don't really know they're missing yet. But there's no studies. There's no way of knowing what species has gone. What species have no longer amongst the earth until we find out that card keys. We just realize, I don't know where my card keys are. Same principle as that, we lose it. Then we try to close the door. Of, I, I don't, I got no problem with um, environment or, or uh, advanced environment and stuff. I don't, I got no problem. We, we try to improve our daily lives every day. I try to improve how we live, how we conserve energy, how we can get along with the environment. But Mother Earth is very powerful. Mother Earth will talk to us. It's that we don't understand their language. We don't understand what it's saying. And the species that we're losing every day and it's something that we don't understand. The interesting part about it, I had an Inuit friend. This is 55 years ago, and I met him. He said, Joe, the environment is changing. At that time, I, I really wasn't in tune for the uh, that kind of discussion? He said, yeah, okay, yeah. But I wasn't aware, he was telling me how global warming was already there. So, and I kind of 
got my attention. I said, what do you, what do you mean? So the ice is a different color. The ice is gray. He's teaching his children, his Inuit children, grandchildren, not to walk on that. You know, they're up in the Arctic. They're tough, the up top, way up there. <clears throat> so he's teaching his, his, uh, his youth, his children, or grandchildren, about the environment. Because the water or the ice is a different color. The normal setting, like I wouldn't know, to me ice is ice. But I take the respect and the teaching from that individual not to walk on that. And the thing about that, it became a little interesting to me now, where global warming has taken interest in me. The global warming has melted more ice caps and snow. And they and the flooding and the so forth like that. So, and the animals are now the polar bears and the, the seals. Some of them are disappearing, and some of the polar bears are in no place to go. And, and their animals, their, their species, they gotta survive. And a lot of them are going into towns, seeking towns and stuff like that. But they've been there thousands and thousands of years. And the chemicals that we use is probably something that they're being uh, killed off. But a resource has to change. You know, we live in a society where it's nice to turn over and uh, reach over and turn the tablet thermostat up to a comfortable energy source. But I think to really understand that, I think we have to tell our children, same thing with that Inuit told his children, don't step on that ice, be careful. And I think the same principle will apply to our students and the ones that are going to, you know, university, to help them, to teach them to the environment and to learn different resources. You know, I don't know that this is a type of subject, but I'm just going to say it anyway, because I'm trying to get a message there. It's just like the, uh, the UFO case and so on. You know, they don't—they can't go to an ESO or an urban survey and fill up and fill up their space capsule. They, they must have some sort of resource to continue on traveling to a space. But they're pretty advanced, and I think that's where our students should take that route. But they must be taught by their parents or an elderly person or somewhere that to go to university and, and pick up the environmental uh, study resource uh, was resource available, different resource. Because we always think about different, um, like the wind line, whatever we call it, and, and different like, energy from the water, power sources. But it affects, but affects the environment. And it affects where culture was once thrived on, where mostly the Aboriginal culture lived side by side by the animals, taking only what they need, saving what's for the next generation. 
I think our people, the native, our people, and Inuit have been saying for a long time what's taken place, but nobody's listening until there's a crisis situation where, uh oh, we got to do something. We got to make it aware. We got to tell the public. And that's where conference like this makes it aware for people to be aware of the environment, the atmosphere we live in daily lives. And so much chemicals out there that affect our loss. The organic food that we, we eat, the chemicals we put in there to, to speed up process. But it takes time, all the time, the chemicals that is put on the ground, in, in the soil, goes into the uh, vegetables or products that we eat. Over time, it affects us, our health. And when it affects our health, more people now are dying of cancer. Aboriginal people never knew what cancer was. But the first encounters of the European, their thing they, they suffered was the uh, uh, smallpox. Because we weren't immune to smallpox. A lot of people died. But eventually, eventually there was a cure for that. But it was devastation in that how many lives it took before it took effect. So there's a lot of losses. And we can we talk about different losses until that sun sets. It's rise right now. We can talk about the losses of our own personal experience. Now, we, now I don't, it seems to me I can't see the unfocus what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to say maybe that's the spirits that are sitting next to me, whispering in my ear. Tell them about the encounters with the Europeans. What, what happened to your people? This is what they're saying. And how do I say that without being offensive to anybody? Tell them the truth. What happened? And then I said, okay. Um, the part of that is loss of culture, dignity, respect, integrity. Those are all words. But when you lose that, you lose a form of lifestyle. What, what took place at the residential school? What happened to the um, relocation? How a society taken away the lifestyle of many. It's not just Nova Scotia, this happened across Canada and it happened across the United States. So it's, it's a global thing. It, it affects a lot of people. But the endurance of our people, the, the big mouth. <laughs> The endurance that they, they took over many centuries, many generations. They survived. They tried to take our culture. We maintained it hidden. They tried to take our language, but we still speak it. They cut our hair, but it still grows. They tried to take away our culture, but still. Big mom. So the integrity of that is we survive. And the same with the environment that we live in. in we live where we survive. But we must be more in tune to their environment. The environment of the water, the land, the ozone. Those things are really important how we must respect as the elder from Saskatchewan told me 
mother earth is angry. And when mother, when mom is angry, you better pick up your clothes and find your car keys. It's as simple as that. And make a run for it. But paying respect to the environment, as this group here, that, so that they can go forth and clean up their act. Clean up with the mess they made. <coughs> Be more respectful for the environment. Go to go forth and do researches. Go forth and try to educate your generation. My generation already spoke. The next gen generation now will do it. It will take a long time, but the environment is hurting. Mother Earth is crying. The second. <coughs> Mother Earth is crying. A lot of things now the Aboriginals have do many ceremonies. They're doing many gatherings. There are things that are occurring that they have to the sacred fire for a new ceremony, a new flat body. Those visions are being brought forth by the elders when they call their spirit, their teachings. And moving forward and finding solutions. But first, they got to find the truth. And when you find the truth, then you know where the keys are. You find the keys and you say that vehicle and, and motivation, transportation. Now you're moving forward. But that's part of discussing and that's loss. But I didn't even talk about loss of uh, tragic loss or loss of family members or loss of the relationship of a partner or friend. I never talked about the loss of your integrity. So there's many things that you could talk about, but the main thing about it is what around you you're going to lose. What you what you lose you may not gain. That you may not find a car key until it's too late. So transportation is a way of education. So what's transportation is that key, that key that you have in your heart. The key, that's your key. You just didn't look in, you didn't look in the right place. And the key is in your heart through the use of education. Because they're the ones who be driving their next destination and finding the proper training. That's their mode of transportation is finding and traveling in a safe, long life and happiness. I don't want to sound depressed, but this is reality we live in. This is truth. And we have to get together as nation to nation, people to people, and how we could collaborate together. These sessions are really important. And, and learning about Aboriginal wisdom, knowledge. Because those things are being handed down not through paper or books. These are being handed down word for them. So there's no misunderstanding how we advance, how we survive many years. I said earlier, they try to take our language still speak it. I take our culture, so forth. We still have our culture. So it's important when you find the key element. It's not a card key, you know, it's a key element. And the transportation is our youth to educate them. Those are, those are what our transportation, those are the vehicles that we're going to be relying on. <coughs> They're the ones when, when we get old unable to move around, unable to 
<coughs> unable to take care of ourselves, is our children will be looking after us. And it comes down to the cycle of life. We took care of them, we changed their diapers, we fed them, we learned them how to talk, and we watched them grow up. But as we go old, in, in our elderly years, now it's their turn to look after us, because we do. Their clothes, they change their diapers. It's a continuous cycle. We look after them and they will look after us. But we must educate them. And that's where the scholars, the wisdom, the knowledge will continue on with our lifestyle. And you have to listen to other people, other nations. With that, I'm, I'm going to um, stop right now because it keeps it thought, a food of thought in, in seeking your discussion. Uh, I wish all everybody a long life and happiness and that uh, today gives you an idea. Yesterday we're happy, today we're like, uh-oh. <laughs> you know, but it's part of it. This is reality. This is part of life that we, we must endure. Where there's sadness, is happening. When there's sadness, then we'll build it up. But maybe we could talk about the two I see it, but not today, but we will. How we look through another person's eye. That's the two I see in teaching. We'll talk about that. Somebody do something with that thank you. Know. Thank you very much. Very potent. I think we're going to um, open it up for some conversations with Marion and Simon. Um, but I think anyone else in the room that um, has something they'd like to ask or aspect of uh, what Joe was talking about for discussion. So we have a little bit of time. I do just go a little bit deeper with what you had to say. So <clears throat> you made a really good point about the importance of educating the youth. How would you suggest we should go about that? Well, a lot of it, a lot of it is, is, is a family structured um, DNA. And the DNA is uh, very important in, in a family tree. If, if you have um, parents that are, that are educated, you know, they, they went to a great college and university, and they think about that, their offspring would be probably be little bright, right? And those things that are that could be a good candidate for the family tree would be uh, you could you could tell them to vote. But the other thing, on the same thing, you have a um, a family tree that really um, you know it's it's kind of like in reality I'll, I'll tell you like it is you know maybe maybe they they're not. Um, Material for a university, but it's reality. That's the way. That's the way it is. It's, it's a fact of life. But sometimes along the way, some of those families will have a, a bright child. He excels in in school. He excels academically, and then he 
those are the ones that are, that, that are shining the most, and those are the ones that are um, should be nurtured in uh, going to university and help and support. So the family structure uh, will help that individual, but as far as what um, subjects to take, it's already pre-arranged what, what they should be taken by the, uh, the school curriculum of that. In, in order to give that individual uh, support, when you give them support, then they will understand that they go to school. I don't know about your... So really, you say it's like it's the important to put on the family to teaching their children and not the school system. What's that? Um, that the family should be on teaching their youth versus a school system trying to re-educate the entire population. Well, um, it seems like you're asking two, two questions, right? Just ask, I'll answer one question, then you tell me. I'm asking you, what, which one do you think is important? Which one, if you think it's on a responsibility should be on the family or should be on the schools to educate their children? All right, let's see. I mentioned the book Family Trees, right? The education of the, the lifestyle of, is developed at the family level, elementary to middle school. They're learning and they're being taught. Being, they're even taught. One is general and the other one is academic. One will use different types of words. When you go to university, it's a different type of word. So what you ask me is, is it the responsibility of education to raise my child? No. Is it my responsibility as a parent to go to school and, and teach them? No. So you, you have a, a, a double, I guess it would be a double negative question. It, it, I, I think that's where part of the, um, the teachings of elders and stuff like that. You know, I, I will teach you how to do a ceremony. But I cannot teach you how to, to walk the road and how to to survive. That is your responsibility. And that's the same thing with you're just asking me. The education is not responsible of the family. The family is responsible for family. And then when we when I give my my son, when he goes to school, I trust the education system. I trust their knowledge. I trust their teaching to my son. What he does with it, how he adapts to it, how he gets educated is up to him if he wants to go, continue on. And, and it's the family ties that bond his commitment in staying in school to get educated, to get a degree, to further his life skills. It's me that planted the seed of him for them. And they go and they continue on education. So it's not it's not it's not education, it's responsibility for the family. It, it's just vice versa. We must trust their education system. So both should support each other in a way. I don't have to answer that. <laughs> you answered it for me. Can I ask then? Um, and um, thank you very much, Elder Joe, for everything that you said so far. It's really insightful and, um, and helpful. Um, so can I ask then, inspired by this exchange, um, then you're right. I I, th I agree that that we need to trust the education system because 
none of us know everything. And, but then uh, 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 how might, or what values might we instill in the next generation and the generations to come? What values might we instill in them that will help us not just cope with the grief of the loss, but do something to uh, reverse the loss and um, and engage with the the planet, engage with Mother Nature in a different way that will uh, maybe set a, a better future for generations to come. Well, it's, it's interesting, and um, I, I think your your question is the um, comes in so many parts, so many so many teachers, and it, to me, it, it, I just I'm, I'm just feeling it's very uh, it's not confusing to me, but the thing about it is. What is, what is your question? That, 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 that I would say, boil it down to one question. The values. How do we set values for our children and our children's children that will be helpful? Well, how do we set the values for our, our children? We, we set them by respect, teaching them the values of today environment, teaching them the, uh, to be educated, to take whatever they, they're interested in, if they're interested in the environment, and teach them about the environment, that they can go to, if they want to go to a different avenue, or they want to go into politics, they want to go, whatever, support them. And now, that's where it stops. You're teaching your siblings or your children for that education. Now it's the responsibility of them to teach their children. And the continuity just goes on from there. It's just like, I, I cannot teach my grandchildren their value. The parents got to teach them. Not continuity is the here. The value of them. If we, if we, if we want to, we lose, then we, they become we send why why not? And what what it, why teach and hold it all. It pervades them. There was no mistake that the life lessons that we do by their parents that we respect on the middle, understand the, uh, the education, the, the talk. You know, it's the same thing what I just said earlier this morning. Take only what you need. Don't over harvest. Don't overtake everything. Because when you do that, it affects your grandchildren, it affects their grandchildren. So the teaching there is take what you need. Because your your great great grandchildren or your next generation hasn't been born yet. And when they're not and when there's nothing there to take care of, and it goes down to the, um, what's going to happen with the environment? You know, are they going to be wearing uh, masks just to go outside and play? Because our environment, ozone, is affected by toxic waste. 
can they survive the, uh, the enjoyment that we could swim in the water instead of going in there and then having micro germs in the water that we cannot even drink the water anymore, or we can't even swim in the water, and then infected by a chain reaction of the species in the water. So a lot of it, it depends on the teeth and your values to your, your children first. The full value, you know, and it, when they understand that, they could grasp it more. They could learn more. And it's the same thing with any any teachings. They will learn, and they will build up. <coughs> they'll build up res resistance or uh, be stronger, stronger than me. You know, and then they uh, then. When they get stronger than me, their teachings are stronger. And then it'll be passed on to their children, and they get stronger. So that's where the values are such uh, entrenched uh, knowledge, you know. Imagine, imagine the wheel, the simple wheel, you know, when, when, they, when they made it. It was just, you know, pretty different. But they improved on that wheel. And, and look at today's mode of transportation. You know, it was a simple transportation by a wheel. So those are the things that are values of the elders or the uh, teaching from your parents by moving and teaching. You, and you improve your your children and their children. And then, then you turn around and say, you know, you did a pretty good job. Yeah. Well said. Um, to pivot, pivot a bit from this point, but earlier <laughs> you mentioned an analogy I, I really liked. It was the car keys about how you don't notice until they're gone. Do you have any modern examples of car keys that we've lost in a society already from to climate change? We lost the dinosaurs. Uh, we, we lost the, the, those birds of um, tachygon. But we're losing animals that we don't know we're lost in here. Where's your car keys right now? I don't have a car right now. <laughs> so, you don't know, eh? I don't know. No, you don't have a car, that's why. But you lost, you don't you don't know. And that and that's what it is. Um when you lose something, you don't know until it's lost. And that's and that's and that's how we um, wonder, you know, what happened? Where did we, um, what happened? You know, just simple, you know, and uh, there's a lot of species there that we're losing we don't even know we're lost. You know, we're losing animals that are, um, uh, and they're not even reinvested as being lost. We lost by, um, so many, you know. And we're, and we're losing, and to be honest with you, we're losing landmark grass. We're losing that part of the, the environment that's where uh, there was a field there or a tree line. The erosion of the tree lines are slowly disappearing, being eroded into the, into the water. That prevents floods. That prevents you know, a lot of things. But you don't see it until you take a picture. You could take a picture of hog washing now and have a photograph in 1871 or whatever. Then you could take another picture of the same place if you could do it. And you could see the developed house, many houses and many homes and stuff like that. <coughs> so, that's, you don't have 100 or 200 years in, in, in our lives to know the difference. But you, only, but you have the time that is right, current right now. Right now is when you start observing, learning, and understanding that 
this is taking place now instead of looking around 100 years later, oh, maybe I should have done something. Or maybe I should have been taught or maybe educated. <coughs> so that, that's, that's how advanced the, our, our teachers become. A lot of the elders and the uh, wisdom people will, will, tell, will tell you when you're talking to an elder and in, the, in their TP or they're doing their talking circle. They'll tell you, but yeah, right, you know, and you didn't listen. And if they have. Today's technology now has advanced so far that it's just destruction and stuff like that, but it's reality of life. So I'm kind of hearing that. <clears throat> It's, it's, we're not always paying attention to the things that are really important. We can't identify loss unless we know that we've lost something important. And, and we're losing something today. And so, um, yeah, how do we, how do we, how do we convey that? How do we, how do we, open our ears so we can listen and understand and gather that information so that we know better what to do. Because it's, it's about being able to hear. People who have identified those things that are important. Who would listen, do you think? Who would listen to you if, if, if you say about this? Who would listen to understand your your, your uh, fear of loss? Who would listen and what your concerns are? You have to have the ear of a person that would listen to you. You have to have they want proof. Prove to me what you lost or what's happening. Who's going to listen to, to that? Who's going to read your, uh, your studies and stuff like that? Hmm. It takes a, a, um, an educated, uh, somebody with 
background in, in education, somebody who studies, somebody educated, right? And this is where we, we want to educate our children so that they're in a position to say, I'll listen to you, Dad. I'll listen to you, Mom. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what you want. You tell me your story. So part of that is they're listening to you now. And there's a lot of things that takes it from there. But, but they can, the, the biggest question that right now, who's going to listen to you? You know, right now. You can show them a photograph of the serene, beautiful countryside. 50 years later, you show the same picture. I should have listened to you. <laughs> you know, that's what they're saying. I should have paid attention to that girl, that woman. I should have looked her, <coughs> but I didn't. You can't, you can't move back time once it, it happens. You could look into the future. You could almost predict what's going to take place, but you can never come back to time. It, it's just impossible. You cannot do it. And like even today, uh, at, you, I want to go down, down there. You're, you're planning that, so you know you're going to be doing that. That's in the future. But can you take back tomorrow? No, you can't. It already happened. And that's where the, and, and those are the things that they're, um, it, it's a, an event. It already occurred. It happened. You know, that species, our loss. You know, if I could take it back tomorrow, I could, so I could tell, tell my aunt that I love her, my grandfather. You know, I, I really respect them, I loved them. But that was yesterday. They were already passed on today. But the loss is very important in, in saying anything. In, in, in species, any, in any living creature, but the loss is very, very important. And I look at it as a, a, a two picture. And that's where the, the two I see and it comes to into effect. The two I see is, I'm looking at, I'm answering your question through your eyes. And I'm hoping that you see it through the answers um, from my eyes on, on the Aboriginal side. And that's part of the thing is that we must learn what is the two I see? What is the purpose of, of you know, why? Okay, I don't understand that. So you reverse it around. You know, you live on reserve for fifty years, five hundred years. See how how it is how it is um, you crucify. You would have different views. You would have different mythology and, and stuff like that. Then I would live as a settler. I would live five hundred years in your life. You know, I, I would say. No, I want to live here. Don't put me on reserve no more. I may change. No, take me back to the reserve. I like the families, community members, and stuff like that. So it's a two I see that's very important. <clears throat> and how we perceive how we have different objectives and how we kind of like, oh yeah, I, I understand. I understand. The solution. I understand more about it, and I think that's where um, having that knowledge, the teaching of that, and it really makes the uh, transition of of any question, you know, in, in answer and like that. So, is that any help, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's the transition is very important now, how we view, you know, how, how do we, how do we find that description of, of a car key, you know, it's on the ground somewhere, I lost it, you know, so your vision of a car key is just 
what does it look like? What's the beautiful <coughs> I described? So the point that I'm trying to say here is I have to look at it through your eyes, what your, your description of the car keeps. But, oh yeah, I see it was, it was, uh, was purple or green or black. You know, if I just said card keys, you'd, you'd be there looking for a key. Yeah. You know? But just looking at through the, to the loss of the uh, individuals, how they see it, how they perceived it, without the knowledge of the two eyes seeing, then it becomes very, uh, very difficult to explain to somebody. And especially when they don't, they don't uh, understand. But when they look at through my eyes, they look at it through my context, and then, oh yeah, we have, you know, my attitude, my uh, understanding is changed quite a bit. I really didn't know. I really don't understand. It's like having empathy in, in, in the words for it. It's having understanding, the empathy, and, and the compassion, like, yeah, okay, I have it. And it's a lot to do with, then again, you get into this uh, seven teachings. Then you get into the philosophy of the four directions. Then you get into the, uh, uh, the uh, medicine wheel. And, and the, the elders are very taught. Their subject member expertise. They may not have graduated to university receiving a PhD in psychology. They may not receive a PhD in, in, in the doctor or whatever. But some elders do advance. And part of that is understanding, compassion, and then just moving forward and passing those knowledge on. So I pass it on to my son, pass it on to their children and their children. So it becomes seven generations of teachings. And with the philosophy of that, I think uh, we're just about for the time. And uh, thank you for your questions. They're very interesting. And the thing I find about the knowledge that I want to pass on to you as a young person, uh, reach for the skies. Don't let nobody hang your back. Enter the world in a positive way. Enter in a, in a good way. And plan to live long in life and prosperous in, in your objective. Whatever you choose. I, I, I wish you all the best, whether it be science, it could be medical, it could be political science, whatever. You you go and for because these people out here in the audience are depending on you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion groups. The, uh, <coughs> there are going to be up, up to five discussion groups. So depending on where people 
you know, move themselves to, to, the, to the group they're going to want to uh, participate in. Um, and the, the, way you, the way you choose and the way we, we, we choose which discussion groups actually run are you, you vote with your feet. So you go to the, uh, unless you're the presenter, or the person <laughs> leading the discussion, you go to the, to the group where you want to spend, um, you know, and we're, we're allowing for a 90 minute deep dive discussion. So this morning is that, you know, find the topic that really resonates for you and commit to that, you know, a, a deep discussion on that topic. And then this afternoon, you have the ability to kind of float around and find out what happened in the morning and, and, and engage in those other topics. So there are five topics. There's uh, climate grief support um, and climate refugee or climate migration. So those, both, those are both in here. Um, uh, Liv is the... Uh, Liv just raised your hand here. Liv's the leading the climate grief support. And David is, uh, thank you, is uh, leading the, the climate refugee or climate migration discussion. They'll both be here. The other three will be in uh, thicker slides. So the nuclear weapons threat is being led by Nancy. Uh, that'll be in, as you come into the, the thicker slides, we just the room on your, on your right. Uh, with the big dining room is the big table. Uh, talking about the great unraveling will be me. I'll be in the, in the great room in the thicker lodge, and then finally Bob will be uh, doing human predicament, the human predicament, separating wishful thinking from reality in the metal room. So that's the room you, as you go into the, the thicker lodge, if you just keep walking, you're, you're, you'll find yourself in in that big open space. That's where where Bob will be. Um, so we'll uh, we'll start at ten thirty. All sessions will be run as hybrid sessions, and I'll, I'll talk to the, to the discussion leaders about how we're going to set that up, just to allow folks who are coming in virtually to go wherever they want to go, just as you will be able to go wherever you want to go. Uh, so, uh, any questions about that? Just more to the, more to the participants than the, the discussion leaders. So, nine minute discussion starts at ten thirty. Pick your spot and. Uh, I get ready for a deep discussion yet, Janice? Um, just for folks who are arriving today, um, Brooks and I are, are filming. And um, so in terms of these discussion booths, we might come in and out. So, um, you know, we don't want to disrupt the conversation. About it. <coughs> and, and just to let you know that what we're filming is, is we're really reaching out as a, a, seeing this as a collective process. So anything that you might discuss in this, meeting or in your core groups or in your casual conversations <laughs> that you would, would really be great to include in this film. Um, please look out for Brooks and I who will we'll be talking with people interviewing or filming during the break time, um, certainly observing in you know, meetings and hearings. So, so yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to us and please um, know that we are, our, our, uh, you know, our spirits are with you in terms of the content that we're not trying to disrupt them. Okay, so I just want to give people this one last opportunity. If you're trying to decide where you want to go, if you have a question about one of the topics, you can uh, speak up and we'll, we'll give you a little more detail. Otherwise, if you've got enough information to make your decision, um, we'll, uh, we'll break down and we'll, we'll uh, reconvene within our groups um, at 10.30. Sign your media really smart. <laughs> Can I get the, um, the, the discussion leaders to come on up here? Just about a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, just get, we just get the discussion leaders to come up here for a second. <laughs> So, um, every group that we run a survivor session, so um, we'll get you up to get uh, everybody hooked up. We'll log in the Zoom and then we'll map 